You're listening to the Parents of Hardworking Teens podcast, episode number 70, the audio version of my free parent guide, the three huge mistakes even smart students make in exams and assignments and how to fix them immediately so that your teen confidently achieves their best ever grades. I'm Katie Jones, and with over 15 years in education as an award-winning high school teacher, international external examiner, and as a study coach, I've helped thousands of students skyrocket their results and confidence. And this podcast is where I share all my insights, tactics, and tips with you, the parent, so you can help your hardworking team get happy, smart, and successful in their study, and have you both enjoy the journey along the way. This is the Parents of Hardworking Teens podcast. Hi, VIPs. Welcome to a special episode of the podcast where I'm going to share the audio of my free parent guide so that we have like an audiobook version of it. Because I know that it can be hard to find the time to maybe print and then actually read the PDF version, which is free on the website www.rocksolidstudy.com forward slash guide. So if you would like the hard copy version for free, then you can absolutely go get that for yourself if you haven't already. I will include the direct link to it in the show notes. So let's get straight into it. The three huge mistakes even smart students make in exams and assignments and how to fix them immediately so that your teen confidently achieves their best ever grades. Introduction. You want your teen to get the grades they deserve, they want, and that they perhaps need. They're working hard, slaving away on assignments, diligently completing their homework, but it's just not quite happening for them. Either they're getting okay, decent, average grades, but not those elusive A grades, or they're getting great grades, but the stress and up till midnight evenings are far from ideal. I see this happening all the time with the dedicated, anything but average students that I work with and their concerned and supportive parents. So let's talk about the solution. First, I want to make one thing clear. Boosting grades does not mean slaving over textbooks for hours, cramming in more and more subject content. In fact, your teen can easily skyrocket their results by at least one full grade, with their existing subject knowledge. That's exactly why I created this parent guide. It's crammed with insider secrets plus some of my best tips and tricks to help your teen achieve their best grades ever and have them enjoy the journey along the way. My aims for you. The aim of this guide is to help you understand what's stopping hardworking teenagers from achieving the grades they're truly capable of and to know precisely how to remedy this situation for your teen so that their hard work and effort finally pays off. Huge mistake number one, not knowing what the marker really wants. Teachers and examiners want to give students marks. Yep, the grouchy old maths teacher wants to award marks in a calculation. The official examiner wants to be able to award all 15 out of 15 marks for that extended response. So here's the first super basic message. A student rarely has marks taken off them for something written incorrectly. In fact, the rules of marking usually mean they can only have marks given to them. This is known in the marking world as positive marking. It's a real system prescribed by exam boards. There are exceptions to this, which are too lengthy really to go into here, but generally my advice is, if in doubt, put it in. But, there's always a but, isn't there? This is not a free pass to waffle on about everything and anything they've ever learned. And here's why. Markers spend a long time looking for that extra mark in any answer, searching for things that fulfill the criteria. But 
hide it in amongst a lot of waffle or off-task tangents, and there is a chance that we might miss it. Your team's paper could be the 137th paper that that marker has marked so far that week, and it's late on a Thursday night. Plus, when doing external marking, i.e. for an exam board rather than in school, markers are sometimes given time limits to spend on each paper. So yes, it can feel a little bit like being back at school yourself taking the exam as a marker. So we want to mark each question quickly and easily. But don't panic, that doesn't mean we skip over things. Papers usually get marked at least twice through sampling and checking systems. But why take the chance? So the other key point here is make it easy for the marker to give marks. Keep work neat, focused, well-structured and easy to follow, especially in extended responses. Huge mistake number two, not knowing what the marker really needs. How can your teen give markers what they need so they gain every mark that they are capable of? There are marks with your teen's name on them waiting to be awarded. They just have to know precisely how to earn them. The truth is most students have very little idea of how to actually do this. They might know the subject content inside out, but all too often they respond on topic, but not to the specific command being given or at the level of cognitive ability required. Subject knowledge is only the half of it, literally. Exams are as much a test of ability to decipher what's required at what level as they are of the actual subject knowledge. In other words, success equals knowledge plus application. Therefore, amazing subject knowledge is not going to get top marks unless the strategies and skills of application and exam technique are also mastered. This particular mistake is one of my favorite things to train students to overcome because I found time and again that training students to become experts in exam technique and other aspects of application results in some of the greatest and fastest leaps in performance, not only in exams, but also in assignment tasks, classwork, essays, and even just homework questions. I cannot count how many times I have seen answers that contain perfectly accurate and even detailed and sophisticated information only to have that answer be given a score of half marks or less, and in some cases, even zero. Yes, zero. It has happened, and more times than I care to think of. Just because it was not actually responding directly to, or at the level required by, the command of the question. Big lesson. The command is the verb in the question. Some examples are describe, justify, define, evaluate. There's a big difference between define global warming, a one sentence answer, and explain global warming, possibly a whole essay. Huge mistake number three, not being mark scheme savvy. Mark schemes are what any marker has to stick to absolutely rigidly. If your teen has not been trained in becoming a master of mark schemes, then they're seriously missing out on a huge goldmine of tips and tricks. I decided to become an exam marker way back in 2010 because I knew it would be super valuable in terms of being able to help my students achieve more in their exams. And yes, because we get paid to do it. <laughs> Though seriously, now I would absolutely do it for free. That's how valuable I know the process is. But what I was not prepared for was just how much I would learn and how eye-opening it would be in terms of how exams really work and how mark schemes are applied. Let me show you just one super simple example that I came across in my first ever exam marker training. I was marking a question that was about the impact of development and one of those impacts was pollution. And the exam board stated that if the word pollution on its own is used, for example, burning fossil fuels creates pollution, then although it's correct, it is not detailed enough to earn credit. The exam board deemed that a student should be capable of more detail by stating the type of pollution. So this meant that if they didn't write noise pollution or air pollution or water pollution, they wouldn't get a mark. And all I could think about was 
How many students had lost easy marks just because they didn't know about that little detail? And that's just one example. A little bit depressing, right? But time for the good news. Most exam boards publish their marking guides and sometimes past exam papers as well on their websites for free. So a little challenge, not homework. A challenge is, of course, way more appealing than homework, right? Get your teen to go and find these treasure troves, the marking guides, and devour all of the gold nuggets that are inside of them. Even if your exam board does not publish their past papers, go find ones for relevant subjects from other exam boards and study them carefully. I can tell you, having taught across multiple countries and through different states, more on that in a moment, that things do not change much between different exam boards or even different states and countries. And compared to doing things like wider reading for their subjects, I promise you this is so much more effective. Now, friendly warning, mark schemes can look a bit overwhelming at first. So here are a couple of quick tips on what to look for to help your teen decipher them and find the gems that will help them. Number one, what style of mark allocation is given to each question? Be aware of what sorts of questions are simple points allocation and which are given levels of response in the marking guide. Number two, what are the key cutoffs between marks, grades, or levels in the marking criteria? For example, detail such as pollution versus air pollution, or evidence such as referring to at least one case study example. Number three, Look carefully at the A grade or top mark criteria. What are some common requirements across different questions? And even better, yes, it gets better, is that after every external exam, and by external, this means ones that are marked and created outside of school, for example, NAPLAN, the HSC, the NCEA, the IB, the GCSEs and A-levels, the chief exam officers write a report documenting where students did particularly well and where they did particularly badly that year on that paper. And yes, you guessed it, your teen should go grab those as well because they will get to learn from others' mistakes so that they sidestep them and never leave easy marks on the exam table ever again. In case we haven't officially met yet. Hi, I'm Katie Jones aka the Grade Transformation Expert and creator of the 10-week Grade Transformation Program, or 10WGT, if you want to be down with the kids. I'm a POM born and raised, now living in Australia since 2010, and loving it, sun worshipper that I am. After uni, I spent a couple of years working in the world of conservation and environmental science and got hooked on helping out students who wanted research and information for their projects before becoming an award-winning high school teacher with a special knack and heaps of training for getting students more bang for their buck when it came to study and results. And that's why I launched Rock Solid Study to spread my strategies and knowledge further and wider than the classrooms I teach in. The story behind the grade transformation expert. As a hardworking student myself, I did everything I was told to. I did extra reading, wider research, created tons of revision notes. Luckily, I was a naturally motivated person, which is a good job because if I didn't work my butt off, I didn't naturally or easily get good grades. Side note, if you want to see the embarrassing school photo of me, then be sure to go get the PDF version of this guide. But even then, without everything I know now, I was kind of aware that just doing this extra study wasn't going to magically transform itself into amazing grades. It's not as if the examiner marking my paper would get this supernatural signal that I had slaved through hours upon hours of hard study and done all of that additional reading and say, ah oh yes, I am getting a vibe that this student has worked really hard and therefore I shall give them an A, <laughs> if only. <laughs> Often, I was at a loss as to how to turn my Bs into As. I thought that exams were just about remembering information. I studied crazy amounts, working through more and more content, practicing more and more questions in prep for final exams, staying up past midnight and feeling the stress and the pressure. I simply didn't know a different, let alone a better, way to do it. And unfortunately, 
It's no different for many students today. What this means for your team. In my time on the other side of the desk, I've scrutinized and compared students' work as an external exam marker. I've seen examples of the best and worst assessment pieces and everything in between as a coursework moderator. I've witnessed extremely talented and clever students from around the world get lower marks than those with less skill or knowledge just because they haven't conveyed their work in the most effective way or answered exactly what the question was asking. I've seen students put huge effort into the lengthiest essays and get relatively low scores because they don't really know how the marks are allocated. And I've become an expert in using official marking guides as a panel member for exam boards to quickly identify what does and doesn't get marks in students' exams, essays and assignments. And I've worked one-on-one, -on -one, tutoring students and developing strategies, delivering exactly what students really need to realize their best possible success with less stress. And all this experience means I have many more valuable strategies, information and experience than I have space to explain in this guide or time to tell in my weekly email tips, which hopefully you've subscribed to or are following by listening here. The online 10-week grade transformation program is where all of my years of teaching, external exam marking and assessment are distilled and filtered to produce the cream of the crop of strategies, tools and techniques which make the biggest difference to students' lives and results. Because I've developed proven systems which have radically changed the grades, confidence and lifelong opportunities for thousands of students. And I've organised everything into 10 modules to catapult grades and confidence in just 10 weeks. I give a little bit of the why and a lot of the how with plenty of templates, explanations, cheat sheets and real life examples. It is not a load more theory to learn. Instead, I give your teen proven actions and practical strategies. And when they're clear on exactly what's being asked of them in every task or question and know precisely how to respond, your teen can study with clarity and confidence so they achieve the results they deserve and are truly capable of. It's time for your teen to harness their student superpowers. If you're here listening to this, then it's likely that you're ready for your teen to catapult their grades. But this is also about your teen having confidence, confidence in their knowledge, their ability and performance. So they approach exams in a cool, calm and collected fashion, tackling assignments with grace and speed, whilst also creating a finished product that will gain them the credit that they deserve. It's about pride and enjoyment, pride in themselves and what they achieve, enjoyment in and out of school or college because there's no more confusion or anxiety about what they need to do for a task and no more late night meltdowns when they just don't get the homework. It's about them having every possible opportunity available to them in later life so they go on to live a life that they love, not just simply the life that they have the grades for. But most of all, it's about them achieving greater success with less stress, making studies smoother and more rewarding in every possible way. And I'm here to help them do all of that. Summary. Five steps to get your teen confident and successful in their study. Number one, the study success formula. Success equals knowledge plus application. So work on application skills and techniques. Number two, positive marking. This usually means that marks can be gained, not lost. So if in doubt, put it in rather than leave it out. But avoid the waffle. Number three, know how different questions are marked. Marking guides reveal how marks are allocated and reveal the criteria for top marks. Number four, the command word or words in every task or question reveal exactly what to focus on and at what level of cognitive ability. And number five, look out for future free parent events where I will reveal more detail on these concepts and some of the top end techniques that will help you support your teen. So here's the bottom line. Most students don't know about these behind the scenes strategies. There's simply not enough time in class to teach them, what with all the subject content that they're having to learn. And most teachers aren't external examiners, so don't necessarily know about them themselves. 
That means that being aware and taking action on them will put your teen in probably the top 5% of the student population. And if they master them, we're talking top 2%. And this is no exaggeration. I've seen enough exams and taught enough students to know. And this is the end of the audio for the three huge mistakes free parent guide. I hope you found it helpful and it doesn't have to be the end of the tips, insights and insider info. That I should say I am totally allowed to share. Much of this information is out there on the internet for everyone to see, but often it's buried in 80 page downloads in wordy rubrics or syllabus documents. So I just like to distill and explain everything in easy to understand and easy to action and use ways. So if you found your way to the podcast through this particular episode, then I recommend going back and starting with episodes one to five and then picking out any other ones that you like the sound of. I particularly recommend episode 63, playing the game of academics, what it really is and how to win at the game. And if you have been a listener for a while and gotten any benefit or found something useful from the podcast, I would love it if you paid it forward and forwarded it on in a message or send a screenshot or share it on your social media so that other parents with hardworking teens can also benefit. And I would also really appreciate you helping to spread the word as well. And finally, if you don't already have the PDF version of this parent guide, you can get it at www.rocksolidstudy.com forward slash guide. Have a brilliant rest of your day. I will see you back here next week for another episode of the Parents of Hardworking Teens podcast. Take care. See you then. Bye. If you're ready to have your teen achieve their best possible results with less stress, then I want to invite you to enroll them in the 10-week grade transformation program, where they're going to learn the key concepts, skills, and strategies to catapult their performance in assessments and exams. It's risk-free. They either achieve bigger and better results with a whole lot more confidence in 10 weeks, or we refund you in full. Just head over to www.rocksolidstudy.com forward slash program, and I'll see you there.